Houston Wrestling is brought to you by Monet for the life of your hair. Brothers Pizzeria for a little taste of the Big Apple. Rainforest Car Wash and Lube, your wellness center for automobiles. And by Bear Lobby's Sport Karate America. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the debut episode of Houston Wrestling. I'm Eric Palmer, and join with me today a man who certainly needs no introduction, a man known all over the world in the wrestling business, and a Texas All Pro original, Mr. Chaz Taylor. Chaz, thank you for joining us. Eric, thank you for having me here. I'm so excited. I mean, the, the upcoming talented TAP right now is just through the roof. I'm just so excited, and and I'm honored to be here. I, I've been away from TAP. I'm glad to see it's back, and uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, well, it's great to have you, man, and what a show we have tonight. Our opening match, Rudy Russo, as you see here, a man from San Antonio, Texas, getting ready to take on a man I know you're very familiar with, the Royal Prince Canoe. Dirty deeds. Uh, I, uh, I just want to kick his teeth out like they're chicken. There's a lot of people here at TAP that I look up to, and that I like, and I admire, but that Prince Canoe is not one of them. Well, Prince Canoe certainly been on a hot streak lately, but he's going to have his hands full with Rudy Russo here tonight. A man, again, I know you're familiar with, having worked alongside many times over the years. You also look like you like to be talking here right now. I'm excited to see what they bring to the action tonight. Canoe certainly never one to want to cooperate with the referees. I don't think he, he is, knows what to expect with Russo, though. I don't know that he's ever been in the ring with them. And one great thing uh, uh, that a downfall of Canoe is that he underestimates a lot of his opponents. And, uh, you know, because of his arrogance and, you know, his he, he just he, he thinks he's better than everybody. And, uh, you know, that must be some stuff that his parents... F uh, force fed him when he was young or whatever and I, I guess he believed it you know I don't I I don't claim to know well certainly that royal blood coming through and as you can already see there's a bit of a size difference canoe is really gonna have to lean on that size advantage but I think if it comes down to the quickness uh, there you go that uh -huh. size and strength coming into play but he's gonna have to try to stay away from Russo speed in this match Russo might be playing a little possum with him right there I see it going to a canoe's head. Might be. You know, lull him into a little false sense of security. Just kind of feel him out for for a little bit and see what he's working with. Wow, is that an awesome Texas All-Pro Wrestling ring mat? Wow, you guys pulled out all stops here. That is definitely one of a kind. One of a kind. You will not see a, a ring like this anywhere in the state of Texas. Be awesome. Got him in the corner. Got him in the corner. Let's see what happens here. Oh, there you go, Rudy Russo using that speed to his advantage. A little fire plug. Russo certainly a veteran, been around for many years, working all throughout the state of Texas, worked in Mexico, all over the country. So he's definitely not one to uh, take lightly out here. As I was saying, right, that's right. But it looks like uh, Canoe is starting to take him lightly. Oh, Canoe showing a little bit of a quickness on his own there. And Russo reversing. Oh, backing him up in the corner a little bit. Looks like it. Nope. Oh. Oh, and a double roll. See, that's Going for the like cover. One. Russo. Two. Oh. Russo just pulls these tricks out of his hat. He comes up with these different moves that, you know, that's sort of kind of the lucha style that he's got into down in Mexico and down around the border. He comes up with moves that, you know, like Eddie Guerrero and me back in AAA. And it, it's pretty awesome to see some of the moves that he comes up with. And very smart to see Russo try to go for that pin early. That's one thing. When somebody as dangerous as Canoe and as strong as he is, you definitely want to try to uh, get this uh, finished as quickly as possible if you have the opportunity. And that's what a smart veteran does. Every time a bad guy's on his back, your opponent's on a back, he, you go for that pin. It, your uh, ultimate goal is to win, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Here you see Russo with the rear hammer lock. Oh, Canoe tried to reverse it. Mm -hmm. Rudy a little too quick, a little too smart for Canoe here. That's that smarts and that, that ingenuity that I was talking about. There again. Once again, L into a flip there. I 
just hope he doesn't just start going to Rudy, Rudy's head down. Well, Rudy definitely coming here looking fired up tonight, looking like he has a game plan. Uh, looks like he's done a little bit more homework on Canoe than maybe Canoe's done on Rudy Russo here tonight. I believe you're right. Oh, and Canoe is, you're no stranger to, always complaining about somebody breaking the rules. Ref didn't see it, ref didn't see it, then he can't say anything about it. You know, if there's one thing I've seen Rudy Russo over the years, and this man is always about a fair fight, this man doesn't need to break the rules. He is an extremely talented wrestler in that ring, and uh, he is as tough as they come. And I also see the uh, veteran referee in there. It's always good to have a better ref veteran referee in there also, just so they can call it down the middle and know what to look for, and uh, that, that's, that's awesome. Absolutely. A man like Canoe is definitely not going to get over on a veteran official like this in TAP. And I like that. I really do like that. <laughs> oh, here's some of that Lucha style. Oh, oh Rudy catching him with the shoulder. Oh, what a flip. Duck underneath. Oh, and the spinning head scissors. Oh, and that sends Canoe reeling. Start going flying down the river. Whoa! Oh. See, that's that ingenuity that I was telling Back you about. Backflip in. Oh! Cut and a canoe. Short. Slamming him down hard. Got a little bit excited and backfired on him. Now, see, this is where a man like Canoe is extremely dangerous outside the ring. Rudy needs to get back into that ring as quickly as possible. I agree. I've been on that side of it. It's not fun. Canoe with the upper hand here, going for the cover. Two. Oh, almost a three count there. Almost. Good thing he rolled in before he put more damage to him. Canoe laying those kicks in, softening him up. Oh, vicious headbutt. That, oh, that oh, one stunned. I I got both of them. That one stunned both men. Maybe not the smartest move on, on a guy like Rudy Russo. I think maybe the ref, referee felt that. Oh, good, vicious forearm. Nice forearm in the corner there by Canoe. But Rudy Russo, definitely not one to give up. Hey, folks, we are here at the West Houston Indoor Soccer Arena tonight, Texas All-Pro Wrestling. And we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight on our debut episode. Houston Wrestling is back, folks. And we are here exclusively on YouTube. Oh, and Rudy Russo coming back. Oh, firing vicious chops on Canoe. Oh, cut short again. Come on, Russo. Oh, good kick to the face. Ah, oh, once, once again, Canoe using that size and that strength to his advantage here. Oh, vicious shot in the corner there. It takes a lot to get Russo down now. You know, a man like Rudy Russo, with his speed and his agility, that's what Canoe has got to do. He's got to wear him down. He's got to keep him off the mat. And he's got to keep him winded just like that, going right back to the sternum area there, trying to take all that wind out of Rudy Russo. Oh, oh right in front of the ref. Come on. Ref, come on. you got to stop this. Good count. See, that's that veteran referee getting him out of there. And Canoe, very smart, knows he's got to a count of five to break that hold in the corner. Russo with the flip over. Oh, and a drop kick sends Canoe down. I had to mess with the t intestines a little bit right there. Irish whip Rose into a reverse. Goes. Duck underneath. Oh, get him, get him, get him. Sunset get him. flip. Does he have it? Get it? Looks like maybe not. Oh. Oh, and a vicious, vicious leg whip by Canoe there. Going for the cover. One, two. Oh. He was going to kick out of that. He didn't put all his weight on him. Didn't hook the leg either. No, didn't didn't hook the leg. He didn't put his weight on him to try to pin him. Slapping him like a little girl. Oh, I hate little girl slaps like that. He ain't got nobody to blame for not pinning him but himself. Absolutely. Somebody like Rudy Russo, you got to wear him down a lot more than that. You got to hook that leg when you go for the cover. If you're going to try to pin him, you got to go all the way with somebody like Russo because he he, he, he'll look for that opportunity to kick out. Canoe with the side headlock trying to wear him down. Oh, elbows. Oh. Pulled his hair. That, that looked like he got the hair a little bit. Did he get the hair there? That's, that's what I saw. 
I guess the ref didn't see it. And Canoe going back to fish just puts. Open hand punches. That's not allowed. Oh, what a splash. Solid, solid he needs to try to put him away here. He's got to hook that leg. Two count. Oh, and Russo gets the shoulder up just before the three count. Once again, you gotta hook the leg. You gotta be you gotta be smarter in there. You gotta hook that leg. Looked like he took his time covering him also. And that's one of the things that a lot of people, you know, I, I'm a victim of it also. I, I forget to cover the guy right away. Sometimes when you land with your full body force on the guy, it takes its toll on you as well. And you're like, oh man, you know. And then you're like, oh crap, I gotta cover the guy. Absolutely. Definitely can't waste time when you're in that ring and you got an opportunity to put him away. Hundreds of a second count. Exactly. Looks like both men are down. Both men are down. Referee administering the 10 count. You hear the fans behind him. You hear that? They're getting behind Rudy. And they're they're coming to life here, you know. This is this is what you see here at Texas All Pro Wrestling. Like, oh! Talking about knocking them chicklets out. Oh, that's worse than knocking the chicklets out. Yeah, that's hitting a little lower than the chicklets there. Close line, still there. Oh, beautiful drop kick. There, see, there you go. Going for the cover. One, two. Oh, did he get him? I don't know. I don't know. Was that a three count ref? Uh, referee is saying two. It referee. Been a good to that head. But that's what you're talking about. Those hundreds of a second. Rudy getting on him right away. Sometimes we forget to hook the head. You get the leg, but then you forget to hook the head in that cradle and grab your hands. And and cinch in, and in that split second, a guy can kick out. Absolutely. Rudy Russo coming off the ropes. Oh, vicious, vicious spine buster. You see Rudy use a lot of his arsenal hitting the ropes. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of, especially a lot of the smaller guys under 200 pounds, you know, use the ropes to their advantage, you know. And Rudy's one of the best at it. Absolutely. Canoe coming up short on a two count there. Once again, maybe a little too cocky here. Irish whip into the corner. Canoe taking his time. And he paid for it. He paid for it. Vicious back elbow from Rudy Russo. Coming out of the corner. Oh, spinning uh -oh, into uh -oh, a cross uh -oh. arm breaker. He could he could make him submit. Canoe trying to get close to the ropes. Trying to get he got to the ropes. You know, was that an Irish whip or was that a Nigerian whip? Uh, well, can we say it was a Mexican whip? I don't think we... I don't know. Wow. <laughs> there, is, there is such thing as a Mexican whip already, is there? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. Too? I don't know anything about that. Who's doing who here? <laughs> Russo oh. taking him back into the corner. Like Rudy's had enough. I don't know. Hopefully that was enough to keep him in the corner. Yes, it was. Going for the monkey flip. Oh, Canoe caught him. Canoe caught him. Oh, vicious right hand. Canoe telling the crowd that it's it. What's he going to do? Looks like he's set up for a DDT. Oh, very much did. Very much did. Go to cover. Come on, you got to cover him. Pin him. Pin him. Russo hooking the leg. One, two. Oh, Canoe a little too close to the ropes. See, and that happens quite often, too. You grab the wrong leg. That's part of ring awareness. You got to pay attention to where you're at in the ring and where your partner, the guy in the ring, is at, so you know which leg to hook and all the party parts. Man, that's that's something a veteran should know. Both men days. Oh, that's an illegal thrust to the throat there. What is what is Canoe doing here? Oh, come on! He grabbed his stick. What is? He's got that staff. Oh, Rudy ducks underneath, grabs the staff. Oh, broke it in half. He broke his staff. Broke it. Canoe is stunned. But you know, turnabout's fair play. If you're going to bring it in. Oh, he nailed him oh, with it. That's an automatic disqualification. Yes, is, that's, would that be a staff infection? Oh, I don't know. But that was definitely a vicious blow and Canoe going to work. Come on, ref. we got to break this up. He needs help in there. Shut up! See, I, I don't like this guy. Canoe having to use the illegal object. Certainly nothing to be proud of in that ring. Obviously, the frustration got to him. It was a little too much. Rudy Russo, you know, more than he bargained for tonight. And I think it finally showed. The frustration. Come on, ref. We got to break this up. 
You must not rely on your, your abilities if you got to use the tactics like that. That's my opinion. Finally, Rudy gets out of there. Canoe may look victorious, but Rudy Russo, you're officially your winner by disqualification. Rudy's a true competitor. I know he doesn't like to win like that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But that's a great thing about Texas all pro wrestling. You never know what you're going to get. The only thing you know what you're going to get is total excitement and, and an action-packed night of wrestling. That's right, folks, ladies and gentlemen, your winner officially by disqualification, Rudy Russo. And I can guarantee you, you have not seen the last of these two men. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but please stay tuned for more of Houston Wrestling. Brothers Pizzeria has been bringing Houston a little taste of the Big Apple since 1980. We offer the best pizza, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and other Italian specialties made fresh daily using only our finest ingredients. Winners of TripAdvisor's Award of Excellence for 2015 and KHOU Channel 11 News' Best Pizza Award. So come on by any of our three convenient locations because at Brothers Pizza, we treat you like family. At Rainforest Car Wash and Lube, we are your one-stop shop for all your vehicle needs. We offer a variety of cleaning services and a full range of maintenance and repair services to help you get the best performance from your vehicle, including a full service oil change to a complete system flush. Our certified mechanics are on hand seven days a week to address your minor auto needs. So stop by our convenient location at 7110 Barker Cypress at FM 529 and let General Manager Suzanne West's motivated crew take care of your vehicle. Bring your ticket stub from the last Texas All-Pro Wrestling Show and receive $8 off your next oil change and a free car wash. That's Rainforest Car Wash and Lube, your neighborhood wellness center for automobiles. New year, new beginnings. We got cameras in the locker room, we got cameras out on the floor. We got guys like Charlie Haas racing Texas All Pro Wrestling with his talents and presence tonight. And I know why you're back here. I know what you want to know, it's what everybody wants to know. It's the typical question that I get each and every time. How does it feel to be in the ring with somebody like Charlie Haas? What is the mindset? that you have. And to be honest with you, there is no mindset because every time you step through those ropes, it's one man to another man to another man. Charlie Haas ain't no different than me. He puts his boots on one eyelid at a time. He puts his pants on one leg at a time. Now, the one thing I will say is that while the layman thinks that, yeah, this is a guy that's been all around the world and this is a big opportunity for you, while he's out there winning championships for WWE, while he's out there wrestling for Ring of Honor. I've been here in Texas All Pro Wrestling, doing it for the people that put on for me each and every night. Because you see, it's easy as me reaching in my pocket, pulling out a Google machine, going to the YouTubes, and finding out whatever I need to know about Charlie Hawks. When the fact of the matter is, he probably doesn't even know who he's wrestling tonight. And while he's winning those championships, and while he's doing his thing, I've been here, building, busting my butt for the last five years, building this, building this company for the last year with guys like Canoe, with guys like Haywire. And I know what everybody else is thinking, you know, he's on par, he's a top world talent. Just remember that that ring out there might be Ch Charlie Haas's home, it might be his world. But tonight, when he comes to Texas All Pro Wrestling, his home his world is in the center of my universe because I 
built this with these people, with these guys in this dressing room. He's stepping into my house. And there is nobody in this locker room, in this state, that has spilt more blood, literal sweat and tears for everything that these people have given me the right to do. These people here that are going to be here tonight, this sellout crowd, this sellout crowd that has given me the opportunity to step in the ring with a guy like Charlie Haas. And at the end of the night, when I finally step between those ropes and the smoke is all clear, Charlie Haas is going to have to cripple me to get through me tonight. And when it's all said and done, he won't be due. He'll be super due. Hi, I'm Bear Lobby, Chief Instructor and Owner at Sport Karate America. I've been with Sport Karate America for seven years now. In fact, my whole family uh, all trained here. We're all black belts. Love the program, it's a fantastic family dojo. In fact, we always say that the family that kicks together sticks together, and it's been a fantastic experience for us. Sierra loves training here with Bear Lobby. It's a fun environment. Not only is it structured, but it's also fun for the kids. She's made awesome friends here. Um, and I have to drag her out of the studio almost every day. She takes many, many different classes here at SKA, you know, sparring, and then there's also trick classes, which has a gymnastic component to it. The sport Karate program is one of a kind and we've been rated the number one sport karate school in Houston since 2007. We have things like tricks and flips class, weapons training, and competition team. We have some of the best students and instructors in the state of Texas, and we can train you to be a champion. We are dedicated. We are dedicated. We are motivated. We are motivated. We're on a quest. We're on a quest. To be our best. To be our best. All the way. All the way. hands. Hello boys and girls, I'm Nick Silver. For those of you who haven't been to any of our live Texas All Pro Wrestling events yet, let me fill you in on what you've been missing. You've been missing my monster, the assassin, decimate and destroy every opponent put in front of us. Now there's no reason we shouldn't be main eventing this episode and every episode in the future. But there's also one other thing missing, and that's the gold around the assassin's waist. He should be number one contender, and when that vacant title is up for grabs, you better believe the assassin and Nick Silver will be taking it home and keeping it. Because we all know, and you will soon know, you can't win gold without silver. Welcome back, everybody, to Houston Wrestling. And before we went to the break, we saw Rudy Russo in a hard-fought match come out on top. Little shenanigans in that one. But now we're ready for our TV main event. David Super Duperon against one half of the world's greatest tag team, Charlie Haas, a former WWE and Ring of Honor superstar. 
Uh, Chaz, what do you know about Charlie? I know you have faced him many times over the years. Well, I know he, his wrestling in, his wrestling doesn't start in the ring. It starts on the mat. I believe he's an all-American wrestler, um, and uh, he's, he's no joke. I mean, he's got a lot of accolades uh, to bring to the table, and uh, he, he plays a little bit, but sometimes, you know, he, he brings the fight, too, and uh, he he's, he's the one that held the dog in that fight. And the man coming out now, David Super Duper on. We heard some words from him a little while ago. Uh, certainly the underdog coming into tonight, but uh, I don't think anybody should tell uh, Mr. Duper on that because he's coming in fired up, and uh, I think Charlie better be ready for one heck of a fight tonight. Both of these guys, you can't take fight. Neither of them, you know, they bring everything to the table, and uh, this is going to be one heck of a fight. This is one match that I, I, I want to watch. Here you see uh, Duperon's typical uh, pre-match ritual here with the uh, the energy drink. Uh, fans taking a bath. Always an interactive experience when you come to Texas All Pro Wrestling, folks. I do you think that's a little bit like uh, off. Um, I, you know, you're supposed to pop the top and drink it because that's how you benefit from the, the stuff inside the can. But uh, I, mean, I guess Duperon learned a little different. He's, uh, I think he's getting that uh, energy drink through osmosis there. Charlie's ready to go. Looks like Super Duper On's finally made his way into the ring. And you know, before we get started, we the man we just heard from right before the uh, we came back from commercial, Mr. Nick Silver, a uh, man who's certainly been uh, kind of getting under everybody's skin, a man I know you're familiar with, and his man, the Assassin. Uh, I know you've been in the ring with the Assassin uh, on several occasions, and uh, definitely a man who's uh, been all over the world and a uh, very dangerous individual. But uh, uh, what do you think of, of Nick Silver here kind of taking over the show here? He's a man of many words, and uh, I mean, but he backs up every word that he says, too, or at least he has his, his goon do it. I don't even call a guy assassin, a goon. I mean, he's. Uh, I don't like my dealings with those guys. Well, look at that. Neck, foot to the back of the face. Is that disrespectful or what? Charlie's showing some cockiness uh, early on. And that's that on-mat experience. He takes him down to the mat. And that's that uh, all-American wrestling right there. Absolutely. You always got to be cautious of the ground game of Charlie Haas whenever you step in the ring with him. David Duperon, certainly no slouch, but uh, certainly has his work cut out for him tonight here. I tell everybody, all fights end up on the ground. At least one of you. You know, you know what to do when you're on the ground. That's how you're going to win it. Oh, nice go behind there by Duperon. Kind of playing. Oh, Charlie, the smart veteran. Smart veteran able to get out of there quickly. That helicopter spin with the legs? I don't know. That was. I've certainly never seen a reversal like that before. I think both men are so excited that they just wanted to get in there and grapple and fight and put it to each other that both guys forgot to. This is pro wrestling and they forgot to take their shirts off. <laughs> Wow, they were just so excited that they were like, you know, they heard the bell ring and they went at it. Well, that's how it is here at TAP. It's uh, oh. fast action. Whoa, see, no Duperon's no slouch. He's the, he, he wasn't the one with momentum. Took Charlie by surprise. Yeah, certainly. Charlie uh, not expecting that kind of power from, from, from David Duperon. Head. Rubbing the back of his head. He's like, ow, that kind of didn't tickle. Both men sizing each other up here. Oh, Vicious shots from Charlie Haas here. Wow, he, like I said, he ain't no joke. He don't play. Oh, stomping the fingers even. Well, that don't tickle. You know, both men very, very technically sound inside that ring. And although I say that as Charlie Haas is throwing those illegal right hands, vicious headbutt in there. Uh, you know, Duperon certainly been all over the world himself. You know, definitely no slouch in there with a the reverse uh, going for the going for the hip toss, duck underneath. Oh, nice drop kick to Charlie Haas. Uh -oh, Both uh -oh, men uh -oh. tying back up. Duperon's dangerous when you get tied up with him like that. Oh, took him down. You know, you look at somebody like David Duperon, certainly might be considered somewhat of a light heavyweight, but definitely, definitely very powerful man inside that ring. Uh, you know, a power lifter uh, away from the from the squared circle, and he definitely has a lot of deceptive strength in there, and that's something that uh, I think Charlie Haas is going to find out in this match. I think he's starting to find out a little bit of it. 
and Charlie taking the time. John with the crowd. You definitely cannot let a man like Duperon uh, lay on the mat for too long. Uh, you'll definitely pay for for a mistake like that. If you look at, at Duperon's arms, chest, and shoulders, you'll see you do not want to get a hold, him him to get a hold of you. And I think that Charlie may find out of you know that that exact feeling. Looking like Charlie a little cautious to tie up this time. Maybe uh, maybe learning a little bit already from from David Duperon in there. Got the collar and elbow tie up. Charlie taking him back into the corner. Are we going to get a clean break here? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, I think he's just waking up that beast, the Duperon. You know, I, I mean, I think both of these guys are a little off. I mean, but he's going to wake up that beast in Duperon. I mean, I, I don't – he's a great guy. I consider him a friend, but he's a little off. I mean, uh, he, he's got to be a little bit insane, you know, because, like, normal people don't shave their head, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, not I'm definitely not going to touch that comment, but uh, Duperon going to work on Charlie here in the quarter. And, you know, once again, showing that power referee trying to get him back. Uh, you don't put your hands on a ref, though. Come on. Oh, and Charlie took out the knee. Yep. Oh. He turned his back. He should not have turned his back on Charlie. A cheap shot, but like you said, you definitely cannot take anything for granted when you're in the ring with a man that's vicious. And Charlie going right to work on that knee. You see, that's bad timing because just right before that, when we were talking about his bald head, I was gonna, I was gonna put myself over with that the golden. You know, with my my flowing mullet, you know, but uh, he just kind of killed it right there. So you know, I kind of like, I can't even talk about that now. And Charlie going to work on that leg. He knows you have to take the legs out from David Duperon. That's where he gets his base of strength from. Oh, and into the ring post. Oh, I know you have felt that on many a times, Chaz, and it it certainly doesn't look good from my vantage point. I think I saw that kid in the bleachers there cringe a little bit when he hit. When he hit. Oh, and Charlie's still going to work on that knee outside the ring. You know, and this just goes to show the veteran status of somebody like Charlie Haas, knowing exactly what to go for, knowing to stay on the attack, work that knee. He knows he's got by count of 10 to get back in the ring, so he's definitely taking advantage of it. And again, that canvas, that Texas canvas is top notch, brother. That is definitely beautiful. Once that again, says Texas All Pro. you will only see a ring like this in Texas All Pro Wrestling, folks. David Duperon slow to get back in the ring. Charlie just waiting on him, measuring him. Going right back to work on that knee. Very smart. I don't think Dave should have rolled back in. He should have taken his time. Ref wasn't up to eight or nine yet, was he? Uh, maybe six or seven around there. Maybe he should have taken an extra couple of seconds, try to regroup. Uh, you know, Charlie, once again, the the KG veteran, staying on that knee. And that's what you have to do, though. Oh. Nice oh, kicks yeah, from Duperon. He's, he's not dead. Duperon fighting back with what he's got. He's got one good leg, and he's, he's using it in there. Oh, told you he's a beast. There's the beast. Uh oh, uh oh, he's got Charlie rocking. Irish whip reverse of the corner. Oh, and Duperon hit face and chest first into that corner. Oh, he had a little bit of momentum going, and Charlie just took it right out of him. Now let's see if Charlie stays with his plan here and goes back to work on that leg. Oh, come on, ref. Get him get him off the ropes. You know, a man like Charlie Haas, you know, you have to respect everything that he's accomplished. He's a world-class athlete, and I just don't think he needs to resort to these kind of tactics in here. And the fans, the fans are getting behind Dupron. You can hear him chanting his name. Absolutely. I don't think they like this new Charlie Haas. I don't think so either, you know. I mean, he's always shown a vicious side before, but... Uh, you know, ever since he's come back home to Texas, it just seems like that vicious side has been amplified, and he's showing it in the ring here tonight. That's not the Charlie Haas that I respect. Charlie Haas putting all his weight on those shoulders, and Duperon barely got that shoulder up. 
And look at this, going right back to work on that knee. Having both knees replaced, you know, I know that, you know, your wheels go, you can't go. So I hate to see that somebody's knees are beat up like that. Oh, and viciously slamming the knee into the mat and Duperon feeling that. Definitely feeling that right now. You know, as I said before, Duperon being a power lifter and all, all his strength is in those legs. That's where he gets that base of power from. So if you can knock those wheels out and keep Duperon on the mat, uh, Charlie Haas might find some success here tonight. Charlie did his homework. You gotta hand it to him. Or, or that maybe he didn't do any homework. Maybe that's just the the veteran experience right there. You know, he maybe he does that's all the guys he knows. And he's just like, okay, I'm gonna take the guy's wheels out, kick to the gut. You know, Duperon certainly not one to quit. Never gives up in that ring. I don't think it's in his blood. Oh, and the vicious right hand again in the corner. Again, on the on the rope with the leg. Referee administering the five count. Charlie, once again, very smart. Knows he's got five seconds to break that hold. Runs into the rope. Oh, and a vicious knee. No padding on the knee because he pulled it down. He just keeps bringing it to him. No time to recover. He is just wearing down that leg. One kick at a time, one shot at a time. Charlie, what's oh, he doing? He's grabbing on the outside now. Oh, oh. A leg whip on that middle rope there. You know those ropes, the steel cable inside there, just wrenching on the knee of David Duperon. Just not stopping. Absolutely relentless inside there. Referee trying to get Charlie Haas back into the ring. And you know, as much as we were saying about, you know, Charlie's veteran and, you know, him being a smart guy, you know, maybe he gave Dupron a few too many seconds in there to recover. you got to stay on top of him. Well, you see, you know, no matter, even if he's a power lifter, he's one of the strongest guys on the roster. When you take out your, your ligaments and tendons and stuff like that in your joint, it, you know, you see when, when he's struggling to even pick up his leg, you know that that that, that the knee his leg is wore down when you... You, you're struggling to even just pull your leg up over the top rope. Charlie Haas going to a very unorthodox method, going to biting the leg. Certainly never seen something like this from Charlie Haas before. Oh, brutal kick. Yeah, not what I expected. I mean, you can taste like chicken. That's, that's, that's not cool, biting a guy in a match. Unprofessional. I mean, Charlie Haas' reputation speaks for himself, former WWE World Tag Team Champion, former Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. I mean, the man has done it all in, in this business, and, you know, again, never seen such a vicious side of this man until tonight. Oh, caught him coming in. Gave him a little possum there. He didn't expect that. Gave him a little, gave him a little bit too much time to rest there. So now let's see if Duperon can get something going, if he can get back up. And if he does, is he going to have anything left? I mean, he's, he's basically fighting on one leg here. I think that took a lot out of Duperon, too. It was like Charlie Haas just ran into a brick wall. That brick wall was named Duperon. But I think it took a lot out of Duperon. But like you see him, he's getting up. He don't stay down. Oh, oh and he gets out of the way. You see him hobbling here. Can he capitalize on it? Duck under the punch. Everything, nice. Everything to stay on his feet. Throwing clotheslines, elbows. He's got to stay on top of him, though. Yeah, you he can't, can't rest. You cannot. There you go. There you go. Pin him. You got him down. You, oh. you got to pin him. Put his shoulders on the mat. See, I think Duperon's maybe a little bit too fired up at this point. Uh, I agree with you. I think he should have went for the cover there. You see that leg is still hurting him. Got the guy wear debt worn down. You can't play. Okay, pin him. Grab the leg, tuck the neck, cradle him. Duperon went for that spinning Grab leg kick. He's grabbing the arm. Oh, so it was not, not enough. It was close. Did not have all of his weight on those shoulders of Charlie Haas. Mm -hmm. Haas able to get that arm up at the last second. David Duperon gonna go for a suplex. 
Let's see if he's, is he gonna be able to get him up though? Oh, he got him, he got him. Tries his legs to let him. He's got, he's laying on him. Going for the pin. Oh, Charlie just gets the shoulder up. Man. I don't know if he had his hips to the ground or not. Once again, Duperon not able to put all of his weight when he makes that cover. If I was him, I'd, put, I'd, I'd pull the knee pad up. Need all the help. Oh! oh! Yeah, the leg just went out. Oh, went for a high risk maneuver, and it, it got him. Charlie going for the pin here. Oh, Duperon, luckily close to the ropes, was able to get on there. That's a hard thing. You know, just like we saw earlier, you got uh, Russo. He uses that ropes a lot on his, on his offense. And if you, the, your opponent is taking out your legs, he kind of takes ropes out of the play, as we just saw there. Duperon went to the well one too many times, went for that high-risk maneuver, and uh, legs just not strong enough to hold him. Oh, and Charlie comes off the rope. Oh, big boot. And there's the belly to back. I think it were belly to belly. Was it belly to belly? I believe it was belly to belly. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right there. Going for the cover, not hooking the leg though. He's not, yeah, he's not hooking the leg. He didn't put his full body weight on him. I don't know that I like this, Charlie. You know, definitely different from what we've seen over the years. And see, he's stalling there to catch his breath. I don't think he. I think he kind of took Duperon for, you know, granted it. He didn't. He didn't study him like I thought he would. And he's like, man, he didn't. I doubt he thought the match would last this long. Duperon coming off with those elbows. And that's surprising because Charlie's wrestled some of the best. You know, and a guy like Duperon, you know, he never gives up. He never, you know, he's going to keep coming at you. I mean, wow. you're going you're gonna to have to beat David Duperon with everything you've got in order to finish the job. Yeah. Well, let's see what they got here. Are we going to get a belly to back? No, spun around. Nice forearm to the back. And Duperon is just, he has nothing on that leg at this point. He is just not able to get anything going on that leg. Dave, don't go to the top. I hope he, I hope he delivers something here powerful. If he, takes this scares me. if he takes this chance, he better hit it. Because other, otherwise, if he misses... Uh, I think it may be all over for Mr. Duperon. Mm -hmm. Taking a little bit too much time. Maybe uh, maybe you should have stayed on the mat. Tried to go for the cover here. And there you see Charlie. Oh, see. I hope he landed on his good leg. I'd have to see a playback on that. I don't know. I, I guess he looks like he landed on his good leg. If he landed on his bad leg, he'd still be down. Into the chair. Oh, ringside chair. And the fight's going to the outside, out of the floor here. Certainly not where we want to see these two guys uh, mix it up at. We want to see it inside the square circle. Both men going around the ring here. Charlie, David fighting right in front of our fans here in the front row. And that's the thing about David Duperon. He will fight you anywhere you want to go. Uh, he's very gifted uh, technically, wow. but the man can fight. And Charlie taking wow. it to him, into slamming the, those heads into the stands. Dang. I know that don't tickle. Right in front of the fans, too. I know the ref has to see that. Referee trying to get some water, trying to get him back into the ring. Fans in front row certainly getting their money's worth here tonight. I don't know where Dupron gets all his energy. And I think this match has been thrown out. This match has. The, everything's lost control here. Yeah, guys coming from the locker room. There's everybody. Yeah, we just... Uh, folks, uh, I, I believe this match has been thrown out. We are getting word this match has officially been thrown out. It is a double count out, folks. Never know what to, you're going to expect, Texas All Pro Wrestling. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're running out of time. we got to go. For Chaz Taylor, I'm Eric Fulmer. Thank you for tuning in to Houston Wrestling, and good night. <laughs>